Okay, so in the scenario where we're given a partial differential equation, one of the things that we want to seek is whether there's any wave solutions of that PDE. And we do that primarily by just trying to find solutions of the form u is equal to cosine kx minus omega t. And the reason is that having a function of kx minus omega t, just as we've seen with the Allenbeer solution, means that there's a pattern that moves at some constant speed across space and time. And the reason in a lot of circumstances space is homogeneous, and in that scenario, the basic pattern is always trigonometric. So it could be cosine, it could be sine, or it could be the complex exponential. But cos let's use the cosine. So we're going to look at three examples, and the first one is the classic wave PDE that we've already derived and had a look at. So let's see what we can find in this form. All right, so first let's look at the space derivatives and the space derivative du by dx is the derivative of that cosine minus sine of its argument times the derivative of that argument with respect to x, which is k. Then the second derivative with respect to x is the derivative of this, so the derivative of sine is cosine, and then we have to multiply by the derivative of its argument with respect to x, and that brings out another factor of k, making k squared. The time derivative is similar. similar. Differentiate the cosine, and you get minus sine, kx minus omega t, multiplied by the derivative of its a is minus omega. Then the second derivative is the derivative of sine is cosine, the argument kx minus omega t, times the derivative of this argument with respect to t, which is another factor of minus omega, so we have minus omega squared. Right, so then let's put these into the PDE, and on the left hand side is two time derivatives, which writing a bit more simply is minus omega squared cosine of kx minus omega t is equal to the right hand side c star squared two x derivatives, which we've determined is minus, so I'll squeeze a minus sign in front, k squared. Cosine. And to satisfy the PDE, we want to satisfy this equation for all x and t. And in general, that's quite hard. But here, the x and t dependence on both sides only occurs by exactly the same cosine. And so we can satisfy this equation for all x and t simply by setting the coefficients of these cosines equal to zero. That is, to satisfy the PDE, we need minus omega squared is minus c star squared k squared. All right, and that gives us what we're going to call soon a dispersion relation. Omega squared is c star squared k squared. Taking the square roots, um, what happens? Omega is plus or minus c k c star k. And this constrains the frequency of the waves as a function of their wave number. And remember their wave number depends upon their length. So what about the wave speed? How fast do these waves travel? Well remember that the wave speed c is the frequency divided by the wave number. So here that's plus or minus c star k divided by k, which is plus or minus c star. And as we see, saw from the Allenbeer solution, the wave speed of these waves is c star either to the right or to the left, depending upon the plus or the minus. Now that's um, the simplest wave equation. 
Let's turn to the second example now, and this is the beam equation, uh, which satisfies the partial differential equation, two time derivatives u plus a physical constant e times four space derivatives has to be zero. And the interesting thing about this equation is it's called the beam equation because it's a good approximation for the flexing and vibration of beams which hold up this floor or the bridges that get built and so on. So this is fundamental to us structured civilization. So let's have a look at the wave solutions that it uh, governs. And we, sim we simply substitute u is equal to cosine kx minus omega t into this and see what happens. So the two time derivatives we know. Uh, what about the four space derivatives? Well, we already know from here that two space derivatives are minus k squared cos omega t, k x minus omega t. So two more space derivatives of this cosine brings another factor of minus k squared out the front. So that says u x x x is minus k squared squared cosine k x minus omega t. Some derivatives from over here minus omega squared cosine k x minus omega t plus e times these four space derivatives. So minus k squared squared is k to the fourth cosine kx minus omega t has to be zero, i.e. minus omega squared plus e k to the fourth cosine kx minus omega t has to be zero. Again, to satisfy the PDE, we must satisfy this for all x and t. Because this cosine is in general non-zero, the only way we can satisfy this for all x and t is if the coefficient is zero. In essence, we're equating the coefficient of the cosine here to the coefficient of the cosine over there, which is zero. So that is, we need omega squared to be e k to the fourth. Taking the square roots, omega is plus or minus square root of e k squared. And what this means again is that um, the waves in a beam do not travel at the same speed. And we can see that by computing the wave speed. So the wave speed at c is omega over k, that's plus or minus root e k squared over k. One of these k's cancel and we get plus or minus root e k. So in other words, waves of different wavelength, remember k is too high over the wavelength of the waves, travel at different speeds. And in particular, small waves, small l, travel fast in a beam, <clears throat> whereas long waves, long l, travel slow. So that's what beams do. What's the third example? Well, the th third example is this heat partial differential equation that you probably have seen before. The u by dt is d squared u dx squared. Let's see if we can find some wave solutions for this. And it should be no surprise that we fail. Let's have a look how it fails. Now, we simply substitute u is equal to cosine kx minus omega t. Uh, we've got a formula for the second derivative and the, time, uh, the first derivative. So to satisfy the PDE, we need minus minus omega, so that's plus omega sine kx minus omega t is equal to two space derivatives. So that's the minus k squared cosine kx minus omega t. And to satisfy the PDE, this has to be satisfied for all x and t. 
but we can't do that. Right? We can't equate coefficients because this is a sine and that's a cosine. Um, you know, we just cannot satisfy this equation for all x and t. So there's no solution. So trying u is equal to cosine k of x minus omega t um, says it can't find any ways. Now, I maintain looking for complex exponential solutions is a better thing to do. So when the cosine fails, try those. Right, so here, instead, we will seek u is equal to e to the i kx minus omega t and see what that tells us. See if it can find waves. Okay, for complex exponentials, it's very similar. Um, partial derivatives, du by dt, is the derivative of the complex exponential. And the beauty of the exponential is, of course, that it's its own derivative. Uh, but then we have to multiply by the derivative of the argument with respect to t. And t occurs there, so there's a co constant minus i omega to multiply by. Similarly for the u by dx. Derivative of the exponential is itself times the derivative of the argument with respect to x, which is times ik. And the second derivative, differentiate this again, derivative of the exponential is itself. times the derivative of the argument with respect to x, which is another factor of ik, so that's ik squared. And one thing you know about ik squared is that it's minus k squared. So minus k squared e to the i kx minus omega t. So this partial differential equation requires that the u by dt minus i omega e to the i k x minus omega t has to be u x x which is minus k squared e to the i k x minus omega t and this has to be true for all x and t now we can do that here that's good we couldn't do it for the cosine but here we can because this complex exponential is exactly the same precisely as that one so we can satisfy this equation for all x and t by equating coefficients. So let's do that. Minus i omega has to be minus k squared. In other words, multiplying through by i, we find omega is minus i k squared. And this is a problem here. Omega is meant to be a frequency. Here, i is a complex number, so this is saying the frequency is complex. Surely that's crazy, and it is. Um, it would say the wave speed, for example, which is c is omega over k, is minus i k squared over k, is minus i of k, is complex. So the wave is moving out into the complex plane. That's no use whatsoever. So we need the relationship between frequency and wave number to be real. So there are no waves. However, one of the beauties of the complex exponential um, is that it can tell us a bit more, even than just there are no waves. Um, this is still a solution, right? It's just that omega is not what we thought it was. So let's see what solution it's predicting. So let's put omega is minus i k squared into this form for u. Right, so take that and say i e, it's saying the solution u is e to the i k x minus omega, so that's minus i k squared the t. Okay, so two minuses become a plus, and let's write this as 
e, then e to the i k x. And that i multiplying that i is a minus. So we get minus k squared t. And remember that um, the exponential of a sum is the product of the exponentials. So we can write this as e to the i k x times e to the minus k squared t. So although it's not a wave, because it doesn't oscillate, we nonetheless have a solution. And this is an interesting solution. It's saying, given some complex exponential structure in x, which is just another version of saying an oscillatory structure in x, they evolve in time according to e to the minus something t. In other words, they decay, because that is a decaying exponential. So it's not a wave, but it's decay. And those of you who've met the heat PDE before will remember that's what the solutions of the heat PDE do. They spread out, they decay down. They do not propagate. And so the complex exponential is more powerful because it can tell us that information, even though we thought we were looking for waves.